Productions. It is now time for a member statement. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Guy. Speaker. He's a good guy. I'm very pleased to rise today to recognize the Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Association of Ontario, MEAO being the acronym. They are with us today to mark May 12th as the official awareness day for myalgic encephalomyelitis, fibromyalgia, and multiple chemical sensitivities, which are chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses that afflict over 500,000 people in Ontario. As I said in my statement last fall, the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care received a business case proposal for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health back in 2013. The point of establishing such a centre of excellence is to provide the hundreds of thousands of Ontarians afflicted with these illnesses with the appropriate care and treatment they deserve, which would, in the long run, improve our health care system. To date, the Ministry has not given approval to this business case proposal, although it has recognized the business case proposal and announced a task force on environmental health. As funding of these illnesses is almost non-existent, I urge the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care to get moving on the task force that will deliver a system of care to ensure that effective and appropriate services are given to the hundreds of thousands of Ontario patients who suffer from these chronic, complex, environmentally linked illnesses. I'd like to thank the Association for their excellent advocacy work for Ontario's Ontarians living with myalgic encephalomyelitis and associated illnesses. We look forward to receiving the Health Minister's update with regard to this approval of this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today as the NDP critic for Labour to speak once again to the countless workers in our province forced to take severe job action because of the Liberal government's austerity cuts, especially in education and health care. Because of the government's desire to strip collective agreements uh, to reduce teachers' ability to use their professional judgment and to remove caps on class sizes, we know that almost a million students and 73,000 teachers were affected by strike action this week. In my own riding of Welland, members of OPSU 294 have been on strike since April the 10th. The CCC responsible for contracting to the no, for-profit care partners has not said a peep, nor has the government, about ensuring transparency and accountability for the private agencies these nurses are working for and ensuring quality patient care. Crown Holdings workers here in Toronto, working for one of the largest manufacturers of food and beverage containers, has been on strike since September 2013. Shame, shame, because of massive concessions demanded by the workers, Crown has refused to negotiate a fair settlement, has instead hired scab replacement workers to prolong the dispute and try and break the strike. The government's announced a special inquiry. When is that going to happen? I stand in solidarity with these workers across our province, our educators, our nurses, and Crown Holding workers, and urge this government to take the necessary steps to ensure that labour laws are strengthened so workers in this province are treated with the respect and the dignity that they deserve. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, on Monday, May 18th, we will be celebrating International Museum Day and this year's themes, Museum for a Sustainable Society. I want to take this opportunity to recognize and thank the Ontario Museum Association, some of who are at Queen's Park today. This year's theme recognizes the role of museums in raising public awareness, specifically about the need for a society that is less wasteful, more cooperative, and uses resources in a way that respects living systems. En tant que francophile, je me réjouis de la commémoration. As a francophile, I am very happy to recognize 400 years of French presence in Ontario. And Francophone communities have played and continue to play a very important role for Ontario. Co collection deserves special mention. The 400 collection, Collection du 400e, featuring artifacts and documents from museums across the province. This collection tells the story of the people, the places, the institutions that make our Francophone heritage. Tourism, heritage, and culture come together in Ontario's museums. They have a significant impact on the social and economic vitality of our province, attracting more than three million national and international visitors to Ontario each year. Thank you all for preserving our cultural heritage, for telling our stories, and for fostering historical understanding. Merci, miigwech. Thank you, miigwech. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very sorry to have occasion to rise once more to extend condolences to the people of Nepal and their friends and family around the world. After the devastating earthquake on April 25th, which took the lives of over 8,000 people, in Nepal and northern India. Another strong earthquake shook the region today, resulting in more destruction and dozens of fatalities. 
This magnitude 7.3 earthquake was followed by at least six strong aftershocks, which were felt as far away as Delhi, the Indian capital, and Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh. On behalf of the Ontario PC Party and our leader, Patrick Brown, I extend heartfelt condolences to the Nepalese and Indian communities in Ontario and all those who have been affected by this terrible tragedy. Thousands of people living in that region are sleeping outside tonight, afraid to return to their homes for fear they'll collapse. And workers are renewing their courageous efforts to rescue survivors, help the injured, and distribute aid to families who have been left with nothing. It's really devastation beyond what we can imagine here in Ontario. I think we are all deeply saddened that people who have already endured so much should be faced with further tragedy, and they will continue to be in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Good afternoon, Speaker. Here's the latest newscast from the Windsor area. Pardon the pun, but it is a change of habit. The Ursuline sisters have donated $300,000 to the Windsor Symphony. The nuns founded a music school in Windsor back in 1915. The Ursuline Order shifted their focus to social work more than 20 years ago. The money meant to honour the nuns who taught at the music school will go into the symphony's permanent endowment fund. Last month, the Toldo Foundation put half a million into that fund. It was matched by the federal government, so maestro, play on. <laughs> Speaker, as you know, the Ontario government is cutting back on the money available for Hollywood productions, but Hollywood was in Windsor last weekend for the DVD launch of the locally shot film, The Birder. A portion of the proceeds for the evening will go to the Ojibwe Nature Center. Very nice. The film is a revenge comedy that tells the tale of a rivalry for the job of head of ornithology at a local park. Well, here at Queen's Park, Speaker, as you sat there on your perch, keep an eye on some of the strange birds on the other side of the aisle who like to ruffle your feathers from time to time. <laughs> and here's a shout out to the paramedics, Trisha Russo and Chris Kerwin. They won first place at the Advanced Care Division at the annual paramedics competition held in Durham recently. They were graded on how well they handled emergencies such as earthquakes and a patient with no vital signs, which from time to time for short periods we Thank can you. use around here. That's the new speaker. Back to you and the anchor. Thank you. I will editorialize. Uh, there are members on all sides that ruffle my feathers. Member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today and tell you about a great day I had with friends, family, and neighbors recently as we worked together to give Halton a little spring cleaning. It was a wonderful day of planting trees, digging gardens, raking leaves, and picking up litter. Hundreds of people came out to do their part to get Halton green. Mr. Speaker, it was energizing to see so many people come out to participate in Milton Good Neighbours Day, Halton EcoFest, and Conservation Halton's Trees for Watershed Health. It was great to see firsthand Halton residents come out to keep our communities green and beautiful. Friends and neighbours came out and pitched in to make sure we protect Halton's natural beauty. It's a reminder of the great things we can accomplish when we all work together. It also allows us to take a step back from our busy lives and gain an appreciation of the fragile relationship we have with our environment. Our region is growing quickly, but Halton residents are committed to keeping our natural beauty intact. Mr. Speaker, when people come together like this, it makes communities stronger, it brings neighbours closer, and it helps us all to build a better future for everyone. We all have a responsibility to preserve and protect Ontario's natural beauty. That's why days like this are so important. I look forward to doing it all again next year. Thank you. Thank you, Member Stevens, the member from Prince Edward East. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to start my statement today with a quote from Dr. Ved Tendan of the Ontario Medical Association. The provincial government's new cuts will drive new physicians out of Ontario and hurt patient care. Family physicians are being barred from joining team-based models of care like family health teams in the community of their choice. Such team-based practices are the model students and residents are being trained in and the model that will allow them to provide best quality of care. More than 500 family medicine and residents are set to graduate in Ontario this June, and their plans to join a family health team or network are now in limbo, he says. 
The fact is, Ontario is failing doctors and especially failing patients in new and alarming ways in rural Ontario. This government's placed new restrictions on doctors who are recent graduates from joining family health teams. Family health teams have been a key tool in improving health care delivery in the province. Last week, Hastings County Council supported a resolution by the OMA to oppose this change and allow new doctors to join family health teams. As Hastings County Warden Rick Phillips stated, you should be encouraging stuff. You shouldn't be eliminating things when it comes to health care delivery in Ontario. The problem is this government has right now is that it's seeing debt start to grow at such a rate that it can't afford to provide the services that Ontarians need. It's now cutting corners and hurting those services. We need to support our family health teams. We need to provide those opportunities for new doctors, Thank and we you. need to make decisions to protect health care in this Thank province. Member statements. The, do we have this right? The member from Ajax Pickering. The member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, it's my pleasure to speak on behalf of International Awareness Day for myalgic encephalomyelitis, my fibromyalgia, and multiple chemical sensitivities. I am very pleased once again this year to sponsor the Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Association Ontario. MEO is, MEAO is the acronym who are here today to mark May 12th as the official awareness day for myalgic encephalomyelitis, fibromyalgia, and multiple chemical sensitivities, which are three chronic, complex, and environmentally linked illnesses which afflict over 560,000 Ontarians. I've had the pleasure of sponsoring this association many times over the last several years for their very extremely worthy cause. MEAO supports the hundreds of thousands of patients in Ontario who have complex, chronic, environmentally linked illnesses. As pointed out numerous times over the years, these patients experience systematic barriers to getting the health care they need because diagnosis and treatment of these very serious conditions are seriously lacking in Ontario. A year and a half ago, MEAO, together with the Association of Ontario Health Centres, submitted a business case proposal for the Ontario Centre of Excellence in Environmental Health to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. And the important part is that the Ministry and the Premier have given recognition to the business case proposal and announced a task force on environmental health. We urge the Minister of Health Thank and Long-Term Care to move quickly to implement the task Thank force you. that has been... I'm sure you will. The member from York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today with a heavy heart because Omni News, the little engine that could, has been derailed. Allow, allow me to explain. Last Thursday, Rogers Media announced that Omni's TV, three remaining daily locally produced language newscast, and all its diversity programming were immediately and permanently cancelled, and viewers were not informed. Ted Rogers, a Canadian media pioneer whom I had the privilege of working with at Omni, would have been shocked and appalled to hear that his little engine that could, that's what he nicknamed Omni because of its success, was being effectively dismantled. In 1986, he had the foresight to buy CFMT, what later became Omni, from its founder, Dania Nuzzi. Ted knew that Canada's increasing multicultural population would need to access information in their own language to integrate well, grow, and contribute to Canada. Under Ted's tutelage and funding, Omni thrived and grew to broadcast in 32 different languages and produce five daily language local newscasts. The working model, which he championed and nourished, notwithstanding the naysayers, became a content-driven, profitable media operation. Ted died in 2008, and since then, Omni programs and budgets were dramatically cut in 2012, in 2013, and now Thursday's final blow. Mr. Speaker, in light of this announcement, I invite all concerned in all communities to come together and let it be known that we object to the dismantling of the little engine that could. We all came to Canada from somewhere else. It helps us Thank belong. You. Access to information to third language is an essential part Thank of you. our multicultural Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now time for reports.